Hey guys, welcome back to the Vice Casting Couch. Today we're going to be looking at the Hive Zeus server. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give a huge shout out to Jeff over at Craft Computing. He did a great video kind of bringing this to light into the home lab community. And I just want to give him a huge thanks for inspiring this video. This server is really cool because it has a Super Micro X9 DRD-LF motherboard. This motherboard is a dual LGA 2011. It supports processors from the E5 2600 and 2600 V2. So we're talking um, Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge type processors. It supports up to 512 gigs of ECC DDR3. It has one PCIe 3.0 X16 slot, dual gigabit LAN, IPMI, and two SATA ports. The great thing about the Hive Zeus is you can often find it on eBay between $100 to $200 and even a little bit higher if you want everything kind of pre-assembled. I bought this as a bare bones because I found I could save a few dollars here and there just by buying the processor separately and I also had some RAM already laying around. So here I'm just taking the copper heat sinks off and I'm going to install two uh, 2650 v2 processors they're eight cores each 2.6 gigahertz so in total we're gonna have 16 cores 32 threads it's just gonna be able to handle anything I throw at it uh, this is perfect because I plan on using it as an app server run all my you know local services and even a minecraft server here and there uh, one thing I do want to mention is if you're gonna get on eBay feel free to make an offer like it doesn't hurt worst they say is no I found in my experience that you can often save maybe 20 to 30 dollars if they don't agree with the price they'll just send a counter offer but even then it's still generally lower than what they listed it as the other thing is if you want to use the PCIe slot make sure to get the riser from the vendor because if you get the wrong riser you'll kind of have some struggles I'd recommend watching Craft Computing's uh, video about it. He bought a cheaper riser on Amazon, but it was the wrong height, so he wasn't able to put in his GPU if you plan on doing that. Now, one thing I wanted to note here, and I'm just nitpicking at this point, is that um, this only has one PSU, so if it does fail, the whole server will go down. Um, some more expensive servers, they'll have two, that way you know it has redundancy. And the other thing is, is kind of these custom length cables for the PSU, so if this thing ever did go bad, finding a replacement might be kind of difficult. But, you know, like I said, I'm nitpicking here for the price. Um, we're getting a great value in my opinion. Um, here I'm just installing a Quadro P400. I'm also gonna go ahead and install the 2.5 inch SSD. I double check the listing's description to make sure it includes the hard drive caddy. It is kind of a custom one, so it might be a little difficult to find. Uh, the last thing I want to note is that this thing is loud, and this is why 1U servers get a bad reputation. Um, I'm going to show you a couple clips here in a second that to show how loud it is before and then after adding it to my rack, and then also what it sounds like without any load on it. First, I thought maybe I can go in the BIOS and maybe there might be some fan settings I can look at. But after digging through the BIOS, I didn't really see anything crazy. I was double checking though to make sure that Intel virtualization technology was enabled and then also to make sure VTD was enabled for the GPU pass through. Um, to find that, it was actually in the North Bridge. So if you're having a hard time finding that, uh, I would go check there. Other than that, it's a pretty basic BIOS with, from American Megatrends. Uh, I did see there was above 4G decoding, so for whatever reason you needed that. Um, the other thing that might be interesting is changing the IPMI LAN configuration from say like DHCP to static. Um, speaking of IPMI, the seller who sold this to me didn't actually include the IPMI credentials, but I found out that that's not really that big of a deal. As long as you have access to the operating system, you can change the IPMI credentials. So from here, I'm just SSHing into the server and I'm going to install IPMI tool. This is the program we're going to use to be able to uh, change the password and find out our username. So from here, I'm going to type mod probe IPMI underscore dev INTF and then we'll type IPMI tool user list and this will list all the usernames. We can find out that our username is root here and then we can also type IPMI tool dash I open user set password to and then after two we can type in whatever our password wants to be. So I just chose admin and now we can log into our IPMI. Um, I kept getting a pop up here about needing Java runtime environment but I think that's only if you plan on using like IKVM 
and some of those features. Other than that, you can still see everything here, the CPU temperatures, the DEM temps. Um, looking through the configuration, a lot of it's the pretty standard stuff like Active Directory and LDAP. There's also some other settings for like dynamic DNS and SSL certification. Um, the part I was most interested in was the fan mode. I was hoping it would make it quieter and you know more suitable, but I found that the PUE fan mode it was on was the best one. All the other ones sounded like a jet engine taking off, spinning the fans at like 15,000 RPM. From here, I just kept looking around. Um, under the remote control section, I believe that's where you could actually see like the console and whatnot. Um, I didn't have Java on this system, so I wasn't able to look at that. But you also have the power control settings. Um, under the virtual media tab, you can actually load an image file and it'll emulate a CD-ROM so you could actually image this remotely. Um, under the maintenance tab, you have a bunch of things like firmware update, BIOS update, IPMI configuration. Um, and then under miscellaneous, there's a couple things like post snooping. And Overall, I think it's a good server. Uh, the only gripe I have about it is just how loud it is. But other than that, it's been killing it. I've been running Proxmox on it and it runs all my local services. If noise is a consideration, maybe don't get this one, but it's a good value in my opinion. I just want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure to give us a like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. And stay tuned for our future videos. Thank you.